The Beyond Trust Remote Support Solution allows you to configure role-based access via the group policy setting. Here you can configure a detailed and flexible authorization policy as per your needs. To find the group policy setting, go to the Beyond Trust Remote Support Admin Interface or slash login interface. And on the left hand side, you should be able to spot the users and security option. Once you click on that, the group policy setting will be available in one of the tabs above. Once you're in the group policy, you can actually go ahead and have a detailed and comprehensive feature set that you can switch on or switch off for members of this group. To begin with, you have the ability to decide on what kind of account settings you'd like members of this group to have, whether they would need two-factor authentication, and if they do, would it be required or optional? When the account expires, if they can edit display names, if they can edit their photos, so on and so forth. Next up, you can also set general permissions for all members of this group, whether they'd have full admin privileges, whether they can edit their vault passwords, if they can edit their passwords, jump points, public site editings, if they can edit customer notices, if they'll be able to edit their messages for canned scripts, if they can join support teams, if they can have issue editing, so on and so forth. A lot of features here that you, that you see that you can enable or disable for members of this group from an admin perspective. Also for reporting, you can decide if members of this group will have access to one or all of the different reports available, such as our session and team reports, our license usage reports, and vault reports. Again, it's beneficial to have different types of reports available to different groups that may need access to them, and this is where you would come to configure those settings. API access can also be configured, and on what kind of access or what parts of the API different teams would have access to. In terms of representative permissions, this is where you would start configuring how the different technicians would interact with the different sessions. Again, sessions can be two types. You can have attended sessions with end users and also unattended sessions where you would potentially jump to a machine sitting within the corporate network to perform maintenance. Session permissions for both those types can be configured here. As you can see, let's begin with the attended sessions. You can go ahead and decide how technicians are interacting with end users. If the end users would be prompted when someone is trying to screen share with them, if they even have access to screen sharing at all, when they do, can the customer go ahead and control their keyboard? Will they only view it? What kind of clipboard synchronization do you want to allow? Would it be remote only, remote and local, allowed in both directions? Can the browsers be shared? And then again, there are a list of features that you can decide if you want to switch on or switch off, such as can the technician view the annotations feature? Can they view the file transfer? If they can, are they restricted to specific paths or can they view all folders? And would it be upload only or upload as well as download? Whether the technician can see command shell, uh, you can go ahead and see that as well. You can allow it, deny it. Uh, whether they can have access to all of the system information, such as the processes um, and tabs and all of that running, registry access, scan scripts, how elevation works, how you can edit and pin jump clients, and also how you're able to chat with the customer. The same applies for unattended policies or unattended sessions. This is where, again, the technician is jumping to a remote machine where there's no user sitting behind. And you can also go ahead and decide what kind of features they'd had access to while using these unattended sessions. Again, the screen sharing, um, browser sharing, annotations, file transfer, command shell system information, registry access, uh, can scripts, et cetera. All of these can be configured for attended as well as unattended sessions. You can also have availability settings in case you want technicians accessing machines during specific days of the week or specific times of the day. This is where you would add those schedules. And last but not the least, and probably one of the most important aspects is how we map different teams and how we allow memberships for our group policies. You can uh, go ahead and configure different teams to use a specific group policy and also decide on how you want the vault to interact with group policies. You can have shared team passwords available and then those could be mapped to use a specific group policy as well. So ultimately end users being added to a group policy would automatically get all the passwords they need for that team and get all of the authorization principles that you've put in place beforehand. 
We also sync with an Active Directory. So as new users are being added to an organization, you've pre-mapped which group policies would apply to them. But overall, the group policy setting helps you correctly enforce the principle of least privilege, but more importantly, helps you configure the desired workflow for role-based access that is right for you. Mm -hmm.